Alright, Shalom. First, I'd like to give all praises unto Yahweh Basham Yahushai and double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and honor to you, brothers out there on the highways and the byways, teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. And um, it's going to be a uh, continuation of um, the look into the Israeli state and uh, cross referencing it with um, the, the prophecies in the Bible to see. You know whether it is indeed a fulfillment of scripture as re as in regards to the israelites being restored and returned back to the land okay now one point i'm going to show you is um religion okay now let's deal with this one thing we're going to start with the law of return all right the law of return is israeli legislation passed on the 5th of Ju july 1950 which gives Jews, all right, Jews, which the prophecies regarding the return of the Israelites into the land are in regards to all 12 tribes of Israel, which are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, not the Jews. All right, that's why when the even 2,000 years ago, when the Messiah came and he grew up in the province of Judea among those that were being called Jews, which is predominantly judah benjamin and levi what did he told them he said i have sheep also which is not of this fault because israel was split into two kingdoms so the messiah who is the one who is going to gather together his elect from the four corners of the earth to gather together that remnant of israel to return him to the land of israel he's coming to to save remnants of all 12 tribes not just the jews so that's where they went wrong all right, which gives Jews the right to live in Israel and to gain Israeli citizenship. You know, which if you're a Jew, why would you need to gain Israeli citizenship? Showing you is the Israeli state is nothing more than a corporation. All right. It says in 1970, the right of entry and settlement was extended to people with one Jewish grandparent and non-Jewish people who were married to Jews although they were not considered Jewish under Jewish law which none of them were really Israelites okay we've already shown you that the people who are calling themselves Jews today they're really um, Edomites out of the Khazarian Empire who converted to Judaism okay now I'm gonna show you something that there's controversy regarding this whole return of the Israelites man because it says here the followers of Messianic Judaism so that's a term they put on on um on um got basically these guys who claim they believe in Torah but they also believe in the Messiah. It says the Supreme Court of Israel ruled in 1989 that Messianic Judaism constituted another religion. So here it is if you believe in the Messiah, they consider that to be another religion. But the Messiah is the one that's gonna return the Israelites to the land. She shows you how twisted and re retarded the whole notion of the Israeli state is and that people who had become messianic Jews let's look at the term messianic Jews so basically messianic Judaism is a syncretic movement that combines Christianity most importantly the Christian belief that who they call Jesus his real name Yahweh Shai is the Messiah so if if you if you um, are a so-called Jew according to them and you believe in the Messiah which is prophesied in the writings of the people of the Lord in the, in the Torah and in the Tanakh then they constitute that to be a different religion and were not therefore eligible for Alayah under the law meaning they weren't eligible to be citizens of the Israeli state they weren't eligible to return to the land which shows you the whole thing is a farce because as we've shown the return of Israel into the land the true Israelites is going to be completed by the Messiah that remnant of Israel that's going to be saved and that's going to be brought back to the land of Israel they're going to be saved and brought back to the land of Israel by the Messiah all right Matthew 24 and and 30 and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of the trumpet 
and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other so the messiah is actually the one that's going to gather together the elect which is the chosen of israel the remnant of israel and he's the one that's going to return the holy jerusalem to the land but here it is if you claim you're a jew and you claim you believe in the messiah they you're not eligible to return to the israeli state because the israeli state isn't um prophetic in regards to the real israelites it's no, nothing more than a corporation a farce which has been set up by, by a bunch of edomites to justify them annex, annexing that land from some heathens that had it before them it says on april the 16th 2008 the supreme court ruled in a case brought by a number of people with jewish fathers and grandfathers whose applications for citizenship had been rejected on the grounds that they were messianic jews the argument was made by the applicants that they had never been jews according to the halakha and were not therefore excluded by the conversion clause they also you know all this madness they also immigrate as non-jewish relative of a jew and not as a jew so this is the ridiculousness of the situation so they've totally confused the notion of what a jew is that's why we're not dealing with none of that the lord is going to save a remnant of 12 tribes of israel okay th those are those who are physical descendants by their father to the 12 patriarchs the ones that received the messiah through the gospel that's the remnant of israel that's going to be saved all right the argument was upheld in the ruling and the government agreed to reprocess their application despite this messianic jews are considered to be to be eligible for the law if they can claim jewish ancestry having a jewish father or grandfather so all this madness now look at this um same-sex relationships on june the 10th 2011 the law of return was tested when a gay male couple one jewish and one catholic made a liar to israel this couple was was the first same-sex different religion married couple to request joint alliance status although opposite sex married couples of different religions receive joint alliance as a matter of course so you got you got guys returning to israel with varying doctrines and are actual homosexuals and they're 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 claiming that these are jews returning to israel man is that what the prophecy says a bunch of homosexuals the lord would return a bunch of homosexuals to the land the jewish man quickly received citizenship but the decision of citizenship for his husband was delayed by the ministry of interior despite the clause in the law saying the spouse of the jewish attorney must also be granted citizenship on august 10 2011 the ministry of interior granted citizenship to the non-jewish husband as required by the law of return so in their law of return <laughs> they got homos returning man this this is crazy this is and yet people believe this to be by divine mandate <laughs> man now this is secularism secularism in israel and I'm going to quickly look up the word secular. We're going to get the scriptures, man, and show you how it's supposed to be done. Secular, not connected with religious or spiritual matters, okay? So basically, not connected to the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Basically, of the world, of the flesh, not of the spirit. All right? So let's jump back in here secularism in israel shows how matters of religion and how matters of state are related within israel secularism is defined as an indifference to re to rejection or exclusion of religion and religious consideration basically the 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 um the israeli state is not founded upon the holy scriptures all right it, they, they keep it separate in israel this applies to the entirely secular community that identifies with no religion and the secular community within the jewish community which identifies with no particular division of the religion when israel was established as a new state in 1948 a new and different jewish identity formed for the new created israeli population this population was defined by the israeli culture and hebrew language the experience with the holocaust and the need to band together against conflict with hostile neighbors in the middle east so this jewish identity they created had nothing to do 
with the Messiah. It had nothing to do with um, the, the, um, the, the Holy Scriptures. It had to do with an Israeli culture uh, having a, a, a so-called Hebrew language, which is not, they use Hebrew characters, but it's not the Hebrew language. It's not the proper pronunciation. And the Holocaust, which was a, a false propaganda, which was put out there by the Rothschilds and their friends to justify them um, creating that military base in, in the Middle East known as the Israeli state. And the need to band together against conflict with the hostile neighbors in the Middle East. This is not an identity with which Jews outside of Israel can easily identify. So it, it, it's, 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 can you see all the confusion that's coming around with this whole place? It's, it's, a, it's a big ball of confusion. Differences in Jewish population. Uh, differences in Jewish population. The Jewish population of Israel can be divided or be imperfectly into three groups. Orthodox, traditional and secular. The largest group is the secular Jews making up 41 0.4%. So the largest group of Jews in, in Israel are secular, meaning they're not spiritual. They don't deal with the spirit. All right. Followed by the traditional Jews, according to 38.5% of the population. Okay. All right. With the which are just guys that just, you know, they, they keep a few traditions. With the remaining 20% populated by the Orthodox or Ultra Orthodox. Those are guys who claim that they're keeping the Torah hardcore, which they don't. In Israel, the Reform and Conservative movements are estimated to make up 7.6% of the Jewish population, a significantly lower rate compared to the Jewish diaspora. Secular Jews in Israel identify as being Jewish because they serve in the defense, in the Israeli Defense Forces. They celebrate Jewish holidays, usually not in strict conformity with Jewish law, and speak Hebrew. This part of the population makes up 41.4% of the Jewish population. So they're just there to be there. Secular Jews are largely supporters of the Israeli Labour Party and a secular Zionist state. Okay, now a secular Zionist state, is that what is being prophesied in the Holy Scriptures? Many secular Israelis identify with being Jewish. However, the religion is only one aspect of their identity. However, even many secular Jews practice certain aspects of the religion such as having a passover seed or fasting during yom kippur that's the day of atonement it would not be uncommon to see a secular family to light shabbat candles say the blessings of a food and wine have a shabbat dinner together and then for parents to get into their car and drive their children to the movies okay and then you get the tradition and all that all right now you even got um atheism um they're gonna show you Over there in the land, I want to. Uh, is there only if you, you can see the other? Okay, look at the de demographics. So, 75% of them claim to be into Judaism, 17.5% Islam, 4% other, 2% Christian, 1.5% Jew, 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 Jewism. I mean, this is this is all confusion and madness. Now, let's get into the scriptures, okay? Because what is the condition of the people of Israel going to be, which is it's the all 12 tribes? When they are returned to the land of Israel. Let's go all the way back to Deuteronomy and what Moses said. Deuteronomy 30 and 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee. The blessing and the curse. Now one of the curses is that we will be scattered among the nations. And we would um, serve the gods of the nations wood and stone. Which I have set before thee. And thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations. Whither the Lord thy God have driven thee. Meaning we were going to come to the knowledge that we are the Israelites and we were going to come to the knowledge of the curses that we're under and the, why we were in the condition that we're in man and seek to the Lord through the Messiah and shall return unto the Lord thy God and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day thou and thy children and with all thine heart and with all thy soul okay so that's the the spiritual aspect the Israelites that are going to return they're going to return to the Lord as one that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, he will release our people from captivity, which is the job of the Messiah, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all nations. That's the like we went into Matthew the 24th chapter. That's what that's what the Messiah is gonna do on his second return. He's coming back to, to, to gather together those that follow him, those that seek after the Father. Okay, whither the Lord thy God have scattered thee. 
If any of thine be driven out unto the outermost parts of the heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather you. So the Lord is going to gather them through his son. Not, not no law of return. There ain't going to be no law of return enacted that you can choose to come back. No. The Lord is actually going to gather together his people, man. And from thence will he fetch thee. Let's look at the word fetch. You know? You might, you might tell a dog, go fetch. Okay? Take. To take away. To bring. To get. To take. To get. To fetch. Lay hold of. Seize. Receive. Acquire. Buy. Ooh. Bring, marry, take a wife, snatch. <laughs> oh, if only take a wife is in there. Take away. To take possession of. <laughs> and that's known as what? The marriage of the lamb. The marriage of the lamb. The Lord, the marriage of the lamb is, is when the, the lamb, which is Yahweh Shai, gathers together his elect from the four corners of the earth. That's the marriage of the lamb in them chariots. You can't get around it. All right, and the Lord that so it just amazes me that you got these Edomites, these devils calling themselves Christian, but yet they want to endorse the Israeli state. When if they're Christian, they should understand that the return of the Israelites to the land is going to be done by the Messiah. They claim they believe in, showing you it's all madness. And the Lord like God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. So all those people over there, if that was a fulfillment of these prophecies, all their hearts should be circumcised. So there shouldn't be no secular. There shouldn't be no traditional. There shouldn't be, it should just be Israelites in the spirit, okay, keeping the law, statutes, commandments of the Heavenly Father in unity. That's not what you're seeing over there. All right? And then, by the way, the circumcision of thine heart is talking about here is the New Testament, Hebrews 8 and 10. We're going to get that. And the heart of thy seed, showing these prophecies, pertain unto a seed of people. To love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I have commanded thee this day. But you got homosexuals all returning, right? You see? You see the, you see the madness, man. This is um, Hebrews 8 and, and, and 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God. And they shall be to me a people. This is the circumcision of the heart. Okay. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor. And every man his brother saying know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So we're going to be one. In Yahweh Shai. That's why the scripture says in regards to the Messiah. The followers of the Messiah. They're going to become one in the Messiah. Even as the Messiah Yahweh Shai is one in the Father. Unity, oneness in truth, not all this confusion. But there's not going to be different sex and uh, sex and different uh, uh, um, uh, uh, opinions in in the kingdom of heaven, man. There's going to be order and righteousness and truth. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And he saith a, a new covenant; he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to perish. Now let's see if this will lead us back to the scriptures. In Jeremiah. This is circumcision. Oh, see? Look at that. Look at that. Even in this um, cross-reference, what does it reference with the scripture in Deuteronomy 30 and 6? And then the same, uh, uh, Salakia, and then in Jeremiah 31 and, and 33, Jeremiah 32 and 40, Ezekiel 11 and 19. All these are talking about the same thing which is going to be fulfilled in the Messiah. And it's talking about the circumcision of thine heart. Alright, the New Testament. Are those people over there 
in the land circumcised in the heart? No, first of all, they're not Israelites. Secondly, they're not circumcised in the heart. So what the hell are they talking about? This is Ephesians 4 and 4. There is one body. Okay, the Israelites who are going to be saved and return to the land are going to be the followers of the Messiah of Yahweh Shai and they're going to be in one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling one Lord one faith one baptism one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all so there's not going to be no secularism and no division they're going to be together in the spirit and it's not going to be no secular society. Alright. Now I want to just finish up on this. Zephaniah 3. Alright. We're going to start from verse 8. Therefore wait ye upon me. And that's what we got to do. We're waiting upon the Lord. Man. Wait, we're waiting for, his, for him to send his son. To redeem us man. To return us. To fulfill the covenant, the new covenant, which is it, which is promised to us in Yahweh Shai's blood. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, which that's happening right now in the Middle East, to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then will I turn to the people of pure language, all right, which is the Lashawan Kodash, which we're currently learning, and we're going to get it perfect, that they may call upon the name of the Lord, which is Yahweh in the pure language, to serve him with one consent. So we're going to serve the Lord with one consent. All right. So this play, this Israeli state is a fast. Okay, and it's not in agreement with what the prophecies say was, is going to happen when the true Israelites, which follow the Messiah, the Savior of Israel, Yahweh Shai, are returned to the land after the marriage of the Lamb. They're going to be in one mind, one spirit. They're going to all serve the Lord. They're going to all know the Lord and serve the Lord. And the righteousness of the scriptures are going to be performed by all. As it is written, all my people shall be all righteous. Alright. So with that, I'm going to say Shalom.